Hey everybody, Joe here. Hi, I'm Dee. And this is Candid, Candid at, at the, the movies. movies. This time we'll be doing a review for the movie called The Greatest Beer Run Ever. It's starring Zac Efron, Russell Crowe, Bill Murray, and Viggo Mortensen, as well as a host of others. This is a very star-studded cast. Um, how we ended up going to go see this movie kind of early was it was a mystery Monday. movie, Monday yeah. mystery movie. So I go to Regal. I have the like Regal app and all that stuff. So I was looking through and I saw they had a Monday mystery movie. I almost missed it because I almost slept through it <laughs> or slept through that time. I woke up thanks to Travis texting me. Shout out to Travis. Shout out to Travis. <laughs> I actually was able to make this movie. Now I'm going to stop talking at this point because based off of her perspective, she has so much more knowledge and things to share about this movie. We won't spoil anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and let you get going, D. So I'm coming from um, the lens, seeing the movie from the lens of as someone who grew up in a military base, shout out to Jacksonville, North Carolina, my hometown. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also coming from a lens of someone who does interculturalist work, which means that I work with people who um, are interested in studying abroad, which everyone, if you get a chance to go, definitely study abroad, but um, helping students kind of realize and unpack their study abroad experience and how it relates to them. So that's the lens that I'm coming from with this movie. Um, I'm very frustrated with this movie. Moving from the lens um, from someone who grew up into a military, uh, grew up on a military base. A lot of the things that he did in that movie, he would not have been able to get away with. Um, one, because that's not how that works. You're not just able to get onto a base like that with no issues. Um, and then two, um, if he was a different race, he would not. He would have been stopped at the at the boat essentially. Um, they do a really good job in the fact of really presenting this over arrogant character, which mm -hmm. um, they yeah. make they make you almost hate him in a sense. It's like you're not you're not grounded in reality, and then in the in the course of this movie, you get to see him kind of become grounded in this in, in the reality of what's happening in the Vietnam War. Um, so looking at it from the lens of um, an interculturalist, um, some of the work that I do, we base our model off of the um, intercultural development inventory. And so that's essentially moving from a monocultural um, lens to a intercultural lens. And there's different, there's five different stages. Um, and we always tell our students, this is a continuing life learning lesson. You're not going to um, just get it and once you get to the, the final step, you have arrived or anything like that. It's it's not that at all. Um, depending on situations, you can slide. Um, depending on where you are, you can slide. It's a life learning thing. So the different the five different stages are denial, polarization, minimization, acceptance, and adaptation. In this movie, he is heavily in denial. Denial means that America is the greatest. You know, nobody can do us wrong. Da 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 da. We don't believe. Uh, what's going on or we don't believe the media or anything like that. That's in that stage of denial. Um, we tell students that it's okay that you're in the denial stage. That's fine. What we're wanting to do is to not necessarily move you along, but to educate you along the process. So his education comes in the form of seeing someone literally be blown up. Um, in the terms of interculturalism, we talk about um, this idea of culture shock. When you go into a country and you realize how uncomfortable you are um, and help you to unpack and unprocess that. For him, he didn't have someone to kind of unpack that. But at, again, me looking at the lens from an interculturalist, I got to see him move, through, move from denial to polarization where he, for the most part, stayed through the remainder of the movie. Um, so polarization is broken into two parts. Um, defense, which is kind of a us versus them lens where either they can be seen as the enemy or I am the enemy to them, um, and reversal. And so for him, he was in defense polarization um, where essentially diversity makes me feel very uncomfortable. Um, he moved through that stage a little quickly because he befriended um, a, Viet a Vietnamese uh, person um, unfortunately, that person did pass and he had another uh, culture shock moment that shook him out of polarization and moved him into minimization. Spoiler. I do apologize. That is a spoiler. Um, so him moving into minimization, it was um, this idea of what he is seeing and what he's experiencing is something that is life changing. Um, and it's to he at this point, he wants to minimize everything to make it make the conflict not be as bad he just wants to get back home essentially um 
and that that's kind of where we are uh, with the movie. I again, me looking at it through the different lenses, I was really frustrated with the movie. Yeah. Um, I was very frustrated at first as well because he was not, it didn't seem that he was going to get his comeuppance. So the idea was this guy was going to go take a beer run across to Vietnam during a war in active battle zones. Not joking. He really said that. He yeah. was going to go give and, beer to his friends. And that's not a spoiler. This is based off of a true story. So you can look that part up. Okay. I'm not going to go much further in that, but we're just seeing this is probably one of the saddest movies I've seen all year. Yeah. Just just seeing him see everything that happened and like you said, going from um, you know, defensive to polarization to what have you. I can say that I do recommend this movie to, to watch, especially if you're in the history. Um, I know that, you know, we've had uh, issues recently, like with the Woman King, for example, mm -hmm. with people who have issues with what... Uh, inspired you know, by true events. Yeah, yeah. Inspired by true events. Um, I still recommend going to go see this movie. This is not a documentary, but it's, it's definitely going to educate you on a lot of different things that happened in this country not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So, D, based off of everything that you saw, what would you grade this score? Uh, score this movie as a solid C. A solid C. A solid C. Mm -hmm. And I would go uh, as as high as a C plus myself. Um, again, the acting was good. the The plot was really done really well. It's just I think that I was upset a bit by the. Uh, it, I think it, it kind of allowed this person to be ignorant for a long for, time. For too long. For too long. For too long. So uh, because of that, I, I kind of have a, a bit of a gripe against it. But again, I do recommend it because, I mean, I, I'm a history nerd. I love history stuff. Sorry, never going to stop watching history stuff. So, <laughs> um, D, I appreciate you for doing this with me and giving the people all this knowledge that I had no idea. <laughs> That's the reason why I didn't talk much. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you all think about this. Um, also, you know, did you learn anything from this? I mean, we, we rarely have an educational side of <laughs> anything on this uh, channel, so this is very different. But hit us down in the comments below and let us know what you thought if, you, if you're if you going to go see this movie. Or if you're not going to go see it, why not? Fine too. <laughs> exactly. So, again, I've been Joe. I'm Dee. And this has been Canada at the Movies. Please click that like, share, and subscribe, as well as hit that notification bell. And y'all take care. Have a fantastic day. Bye.